So we we are recording. I am Joni from the Great Havel Arts Association, and we have asked Linda Regopoulos to do a demo for us. And she has brought along with her a lot of her students and friends. So welcome absolutely everyone. And tell me a little bit about yourself, about impressionistic, pastels, and where the excitement begins for you. Tell us a little bit about you and what you're going to be doing for us today. Okay, um, I've been doing pastels for about 20 years, um, six years full time since my daughter went to um, college. Um, and I've seen a lot of growth since I started to do it more full time. Um, tonight, I'm going to show everyone how I uh, work from a study along with the photo. So I've been doing a painting a day in January this year. So one of the paintings that I did is the study that I'll show you, you know, once we focus and I move the easel back to where everyone can see it, okay. um, you'll be able to see my study. And yeah. I, I enjoy doing that. Yeah. And my, how long have you been teaching and stuff? Um, I've been teaching um, pretty much how did you get since I since my yeah. daughter went to college probably six years ago um before that I definitely taught more like private one-on-one -on -one lessons because I was in my home and I really I'm not a commercial resident so mm -hmm. I can't have too many people here sure. so once I purchased you know I rented my own studio then I was able to get a following Nice, nice. And where's your studio located? Um, it's in Fitchburg, Mass. Nice. Just out of my home right now. Okay, excellent, excellent. So I, the only reason I mention it is because at the end, we want to give people information about how they can get a hold of you and all that good stuff. So I just just a heads up for everyone who's going to be watching this to get their pencils ready so they can get a hold of you. Okay, so okay. again, we're ready whenever you are, my dear. Okay. I'm just going to pull my easel up so right people can see it better. And as you're doing that, I will tell people that how can I get her full screen? And you can Because I've got full screen. So does anyone have a question? I hear someone well, talking. Joan, how can I get her full screen? Um, well, she should be full screen. There's a if you're on Zoom, there should be a little view icon in the upper right hand corner and if you Got click it. that it should give you an option right now if i'm talking i'm probably full screen but as soon as she starts talking she'll take over okay so can you see can you see my screen right now with can you see my my painting good enough on yeah. your screen i yeah. want to i want to yeah i want to say move it a little to your left just the left a little okay. to the left all right, try that, right? How's that? I just, That's with it. the way the lighting is in my studio, yeah. I just don't want to be in the dark while I'm working, but I want people to be able to see it. Absolutely. It looks, it looks a little a little bleached out. It looks a little light a to little, me. Yeah. Start. Okay, yep. Well, you So know um, tonight, um, this is the study that I'll be working from. Um, this is the little photo that I took. Um, I like to start with a black and white photo um, when I'm working a lot of times because yeah, it's right. easier it's easier for me to make it my own painting if it's a black and white because then I will react to it how I want to react to it because um, it, I don't see any color and all the values are there for me. Um, it is a photo. So photos are notoriously, they darken certain mm -hmm. shadows, they darken, you know, the background in this area here is a little too dark, like things get lighter in the landscape as they go back. So little things like that, um, that I know from being a plein air painter, uh, I know how to get around um, a photo that doesn't, isn't perfect. Um, and sometimes it'll bleach the light out. Um, but tonight I'm gonna work on, this is a UART mounted board. Um, I just bought it that way from Dakota. Okay, so um, explain what you what a UART board is for people who may not know. 
Okay, you are is just the name brand of of the paper. Uh, you can get it from Dakota Art Supplies, which is out of Washington State. So, uh, what do you have there? Is that charcoal? Um, this is new. This is a two forty four new pastel. pastel. Um, and I'm just going to start by putting in my darks. Um, so what I'll be doing is I'll be doing a an underpainting with pastel and alcohol. Uh, you can do it with you can do watercolor underpaintings. You could do gouache. You could do a whole range of different underpaintings. Um, but I I find that I like to work with new pastel and 91% alcohol, if you can yeah. find it. Um, yeah. Since, you know, since the pandemic, I it's was just going to say, yeah, I have a hard time finding it now. Yeah, it's been difficult to get it. But I managed to find some because I had donated um, a bunch of it to a nurse that I knew at that worked at Brigham and Williams. She, she didn't have um, Brigham and Women. She didn't have enough PPE and they didn't have enough alcohol. So I donated what I had. Um, I donated gloves and alcohol. So for a while I went without certain stuff, but it was worth it because I wanted, you know, I wanted people to be protected and absolutely. Things absolutely. Like that. So I want to make sure that I don't fill the tooth. Um, I don't want to apply too much. Um, but I want, you know, I want to get a decent amount. I want to be able to get the darks in nicely. Okay, um, so I, you, I did, excuse me. No, I, I had a question. I was like, are you just kind of laying the groundwork here where you want the lights and darks to be and. Exactly. I'm okay. right now I'm putting in my darks and I'm going, once I begin to wet it with the alcohol, okay. um, you'll see how I borrow from certain from certain dark areas to lighten certain areas to give me a value study. Okay. And I've, I've done a little bit more drawing of like the trees and a little just so people can can see how I start. I don't usually draw to like, I don't draw this dark usually. Okay. Uh, but for the sake of I wanted people to be able to see what I was doing. I was just going to say we can see it really good. So I appreciate oh, good. It. And yeah. like, if if I'm in your way at all, just, you know, tell me and I'll, I'll back up or move to the side. You are doing and, awesome. And I have, I have a question. These pastels that you're using, are they specifically made to use with alcohol? Or is this just something that anyone can do or this special pastel well well these pastels i use for the underpainting are they're uh uh they're not as as expensive they're not as soft they're a hard pastel okay um so they they don't have that really rich pigment like uh terry ludwig or a unison or a great american might have uh -huh. um and i i like using them for underpainting purposes So now we can see your hair. You have very nice hair. Okay, now we can see. Oh, okay. <laughs> now we can see. <laughs> yeah, just you know, just tell me if I my migrate over. Yeah, you are. You are. Sometimes great. happens. <laughs> sure, sure. Now you're doing great. Actually, it looks nice just the way it is. <laughs> well, sometimes it's fun. Like I like to work in charcoal too, um, and sometimes I'll do sketches in my sketchbook, and I'll I really. I like them a lot. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I should just leave it as it is. You know? I know. Sometimes. Yeah. There are times when I have. I uh, actually was doing a painting one time and I was painting in guidelines like so much. I just left it right the way it was. Doesn't happen often. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So pictures in black and white so that you can see the values clearer. Um, oh yeah. Um, it's a, it's a good thing for people that are beginners. Yeah. Um, if you have a, a subject that's got a lot of color because color can be very deceiving to someone that's e even someone like me, if there's too much color, it's, it's just good to have, you know, get rid of the color and just mm -hmm. see your values because 
once you get once you get your values in, you can pretty much use whatever color you want. Like you see in this study, um, if you were to see the regular photo, is a very um, typical or kind of overcast day with just a little bit of sun trying to come through up there, enough to give it a little bit of color. But if you were to look at the photo, even before I turned it to black and white, it, it didn't have a whole lot of color to it, okay. which is good because then I react to my mood of the day or um, this particular day, I just wanted to see what I could do with um, some neutral colors. I have beautiful, you know, beautiful trays of neutral pastels and some of them I really, I really haven't done much with, you know, there's yeah. a typical, there's a typical neutrals that I have in my plein air box that I use a lot, but then I have trays upon trays of pastels. So I just took some pastels, neutral colors that were kind of like purplish gray, or a little bit of mauve you know, yeah, nice. colors and just try to see what I could do with it for like a different feeling. Like there, it's not always a snow covered, like bright day with beautiful lighting conditions. There's all kinds of moodiness that you can do with your. Yeah, I see thing. that. And I had my, uh, the study that you did is quite a bit lighter than what you're doing right now. So um, and it's, you got to remember too, it's, it's a lighting in here because I have overhead lighting uh -huh. and then I have a, a natural daylight bulb okay. and it, it, it's all, it's a work in progress doing this zoom stuff. Sure. Um, sure. it's okay. only the second zoom that I've done. Well, I uh, actually like it very much. I was just wondering if that same, if what you're doing on top of it actually lightens it or if it was the camera. So, no, it's definitely, it's at, when I'm, you know, getting towards the end, I'll take yep. this off and I'll bring it closer. And maybe okay. people can see it better. Yep. Okay. Well, it looks very nice from here. It does look moody. Right. Yeah. And it just depends on, you know, what I feel like doing. Sure. Sometimes I like to challenge myself, do different things. So now I'm going to um, wet my um, paintbrush with alcohol and I'm just going to, um, start like doing my underpainting. Huh. So what this does is it, it sets the pastel. So basically what pretty much when it's dry after this, mm -hmm. um, you can touch it and you don't really get too much coming off on you. Well, that is cool. I kind of, you know, I don't do a lot of pastel work just for that reason. I have a hard time controlling it. I'm pretty messy. <laughs> That's great. I'm going to try it. You're inspiring me. And um, like I prefer the 91% alcohol just because it, it has, doesn't have a lot of water in it. Like the 71% has a lot of water in it and it takes more time to dry for, uh, for a demo. And depending on the humidity level in my house, you know, it, it might have been all right tonight, but so I don't have to get a blow dryer happening, you know? Yeah. Plus, the, with the water content a little higher in the 71, would the blow dryer actually move the paint around? No, because I don't, I, I, I don't way. really have, I mean, like, if I, if I really load the brush with alcohol and I, I go like that. If I put a lot, you'll see it start dripping. It'll give yeah. you drippy marks. Okay. So um, you're scrolling. So, and you can see it start dripping there. Sometimes, sometimes I want drippy and sometimes yeah. I don't. Yeah. Like, I don't really want too much drippy up through my field area. Yeah, I can, I can cover it. Yeah, you can control it. Good. But I don't really want a whole lot of drippy. And so, but the nice thing you can do with an underpainting like this is if you want to lighten a specific area, you can blot it with a paper towel or the more you go in with your brush, the more it lifts the pigment. Gotcha. So if you think you went on too hard, you can just add more alcohol and it will start lifting it. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. So like up here, um, I might let it, you know, drip a little this, um, is just all these naked trees 
Uh -huh. um, they have all these little tiny branches that are up, you know, that are leafless right now, you know, in the winter and the fall. And so there's no way I would have enough patience to try to like even emulate, like yeah. I am not like, I give my hats off to like people that can have the patience to do that. I just, mm -hmm. I, I can't. <laughs> I, I'm definitely detail. I'd be there with my little brush, but I have to admit that this has a much freer, you know. But you know what? Like it's every. Survived. It's not like a bad thing. Like not at all. That's why. That's why I love about art. Like it, it's subjective, and it's whatever, whatever you want, however right. you want to handle it. Sure. Is not there's no right or wrong about it. I totally agree. Totally agree. This is this is quite beautiful. I like want to get my brushes out now. Well, good. <laughs> yeah, totally inspired. Very nice. I again, I like the free feel of it. So, do you teach this to your students? Um. Oh yeah. Oh what yeah. Other mediums. What other mediums do you work in? Um. I'm a primarily right for the past. Uh. I don't know however long i mean sometimes i'll work i'll work with ink and watercolor if i'm just sketching um i've worked in acrylic i've worked in oil i've worked in encaustic i've worked in pen and ink i've worked in a whole bunch of different mediums but pastel like i started this and it was definitely it's your favorite it's my thing and now i've amassed many, many pastels. So, uh -huh. um, so do you see how, I don't know, can you see the bottom of it? Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, in the snow up here, there's like, you know, footprints or something. So it's a little bit darker. So um, instead of taking the pastel and applying more, I just go into where it's darker and I borrow some of that pigment and, pull and, I, and I add it like that. Okay. So That's do you awesome. see? Yeah, we can see it. When, so, you, when you put your hand in front of it, the camera tries to focus on your hand. So if you're actually working on it, that's fine. If you're explaining, maybe just it tries to focus on your hand and it blurs the picture slightly. And like okay. you said, the Zoom is still a work in progress. And you're doing yeah, well, I'm a work stuff. in progress with it. So, you know, uh, yeah, I do too. To <laughs> I was I was on the uh, phone for like 45 minutes with our editor because we have another little show that we do. And honest to God, it's this so, the, it, plus Zoom itself keeps changing stuff around. So you oh, yeah, there's have always, it and then all of a sudden something's different. Yeah, there's always updating and correct. Yeah, yeah. But we're lucky to have it. I'm happy that people Ooh. are able to, you know, watch me and I get to see my friends and students and yeah. 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 All right. A whole bunch so of um, that looks pretty good. That looks awesome. Um, sometimes I like, sometimes I'll underpaint my sky. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I don't. Tonight, um, and I'm not, um, I'm not a, a, like a purist about sky. Um, sometimes I'll put my sky in first um, because, you know, the sky's behind. So yeah. it's definitely, it's the furthest from you um but sometimes i just i'll lay it in and then i'll i'll pull trees over it and i'll go I'll pick back into it so there's not really any right or wrong way it's just kind of how you feel like approaching it uh -huh. during that certain time so sometimes i'll pick into it sometimes i'll lay it in first so what um, color are you using there excuse me what color do you have there um this is just a a Giro. Um, I, like I do pink. not, there's no way I could know all the colors. <laughs> so is it like a slight pink color? Yeah, it's a, um, like, it's pinky, but it's more peachy kind of. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, this, there's some pastels I know the, um, the name, the, the number or the name of, um, like certain favorites, like yep. I have a, Sennelier uh, dark green, like a 179 or 177, or like a Terry Ludwig mm -hmm. V100, um, which is a eggplant color. Like, so I know certain ones, but there's so many that, yeah. like, 
uh, I would have to be studying it to be able to tell you. I'll tell you. I've, I have done a number of tutorials myself, and people call me. Now, what color was that? And then I have to go, well, it's eggplant, or it's this, or it's that. So yeah. absolutely. And I can see it's a, I can see the color of it and I like it. So definitely was curious as to the color. Very nice. Thank you. And I want to um, pay attention to, um, I, I like, I really like the sky. That's why I gave it a little more than the foreground. I, I gave it a little more sky because I really like what's going on in the sky. It's pretty. So why do you like the sky? And I, and just gonna ask, kind of playing uh, devil's advocate here. If someone is watching this who knows absolutely nothing about what you're doing, tell them why you're drawn to the sky. Is it because of the cornstarch? All right, I'm drawn to the sky. Um, number one, because um, I, I'm a big diagonal person. I love having diagonals um, in my work, as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, it gives it a lot of movement. Um, and, yeah. and I like. I just this sky it has a lot of like um cloud movement with the way it's like certain clouds are coming through other clouds i don't it's just very pretty but i i i like the diagonals number one the best it That's, kind of actually gives it a little bit more depth too from what i can see here yeah very yeah. nice nice and nice. so I'll definitely start you know, putting in more sky. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm going right in now with some of my, you know, my big gun pastels, my Terry Ludwigs. Um, so these are more concentrated. What makes them? Yeah, uh, more, there's, they're, they're pure pigment held together, just a little bit of a binder. Okay. And they're just soft. They're creamy. Um, I, I like that they're rectangular shaped. Um, actually, this is more square because what I do sometimes when I order is I'll go in halves with another pastel artist. And okay. um, so what we do is we just split, we split like we'll get a, we'll get a set and we'll split it. And why is that? Is I, I yeah, well, it's cheaper. Right? You know, okay. you don't have to pay for shipping. Okay. We we'll split the. You, well, you know, it's. You, so are they just, costly? The more, uh, the better they are. The more they cost. Oh yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. Yeah, like these are. You know, Ludwig's go for about. I don't know. I haven't bought some in a while. Like five bucks, six bucks. Okay. Yeah. That can get pricey. Sure. Yeah, and you know, sometimes I paint outside a lot, mm -hmm. and I've lost a lot by like you know <laughs> my easel flipping That's over that. yeah yeah i know that. knock on wood i've i haven't done it in a while uh i've learned to not leave my easel <laughs> yeah unattended I totally understand that okay so i have another question for you and i hope i'm not bugging you with all the questions but this is a a, a medium I'm very interested in now you're not using the uh, alcohol on that. Are you going to use the alcohol on that, or is no? This... I'm all. I only wanted to use it tonight on um, the painting on the, on my dark areas. Like, and it's oh. it's no set rule. Like you can do whatever you want. Uh huh. You could do. I could have underpainted the sky and just dry. Mm -hmm. You know, put in other stuff dry. It's just what you want to do. Sometimes you can do an underpainting with just um lost my train of thought can you use that you can do well, an underpainting a, well, that's okay like because... a complimentary underpainting yep so um or i could just go in and i could tone i could just tone my entire board uh -huh. with a color like i could take this red or this pink new pastel which i sometimes do if i'm painting outside in the summer especially um, I'll tone it with a with a vibrant reddish pink color because then it helps to cut all the, you know, all the green that that there is in the summertime. Sure. sure. It and it gives you and I don't like to go I don't like to paint outside with, um, with a with a board that's light colored like this. I like to either have it toned or I like to underpaint it quick because it has a quite a glare to it. Sure. Sure. I, I don't. I'm not a big fan of glare like the sun bothers my eyes huh? 
so I have to be careful. I don't know if it's probably because they're just light, because I think there's another artist, Barbara Janicki, has issues with the light too. Yeah, like you have sensitive eyes. Yeah. And sometimes I wear, you know, sunglasses. I've painted with sunglasses before and it hasn't really made anything change. It hasn't really done anything that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. Good, good. So um, I wanted to, to make a note and tell you that um, when I'm down here in this section, I'm going to pull the sky right into the trees. Uh, I, I don't care if it goes over the trees or not, like, because when I start, you know, laying over the, over the top of the trees, it'll, it'll help merge it nicely. And it's not going to look like it's pasted on there. Okay. I want everything to flow nicely. So while I have this in my hand, I like to use it other places. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to, you know, throw some in where mm -hmm. I think there, you know, there's a little bit of shadowy area happening it's, it's probably hard to see in the photo but um there's li real light area up there where you can really oh, yeah. hit the, the sure. sunlight coming in um but then over towards this section there's definitely you know there's shadow happening here yes. and there so i like to use my pastel um all over the place I, i'm not a pastel painter that works just from the top down uh -huh. or in a little section i like to work the whole piece yeah work the whole piece i'm with you like i said it's it's just how i like to work there's no right or wrong like some people well, i know you say there's no right or wrong but we like what we're seeing so we want to know how you do it <laughs> <laughs> very nice so I like to have the foreground a little bit darker. Um, this is a really nice neutral um, pastel. It's a Terry Ludwig. Um, probably going to throw some of that in here. And so what is very important to, to tell people about pastel is um, the effects you get mm -hmm. are uh, majorly, you pay attention to the pressure you put on the stick because if you if you put too much pressure you're going to get a lot of pigment mm -hmm. and you're not going to be able to get a lot of different effect that you want to get okay i have kind of a naive question uh do you ever use like blending stumps or stomps on them um i i don't back in the day when i was first learning i was like put my finger in everywhere yeah, like yeah, yeah. smudge 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 um, but as I've, you know, developed a mature hand from doing it all these years, um, I, I find that the pastel blends itself. Okay. But, but what you have to remember is you have a, a lot of diff, there's a lot of different substrate to work on out there, different papers and boards. Mm -hmm. And you, you need to like play with the board um before you just think you're going to do a masterpiece you, you have to you have to you have to know its limitations mm -hmm. um and its strengths like what it can do for you um because certain board like uh even this you are it, it comes in different grades it's like sandpaper there's like a 240 260 or 280 there's 400 600 800 so what does so that refer to what's uh it's just it's just like sandpaper i want to say the, the lower it goes the the grittier it is and the higher it goes the finer it is ah, but just okay. like sandpaper. that's what i wanted to know so yeah what you're so, working on now is what this is 400 so it's pretty it's like kind of middle of the road middle, um, okay but i really i really like it i like the effects that i can get with it yeah. and um there's times like if i'm looking for like a really textural type like if i was doing like a waterfall maybe or something with rocks and i i wanted to have a little more texture happening i might look for um something specific like um 
a gr- real gritty, gritty, like a like a Richardson black paper or um, a two a two forty. You are, okay. but you definitely need to to play around and um, experiment. I That's why a lot of times when I would when I teach classes or whatever, I tr- I try to like um, I write to the the people that make the pastels, and a lot of times I have samples that I let people try. Um, yeah, and idea. a lot of times I have I I've let my students um, use my pastels also when I used to teach weekly classes. I'm not so much I don't really um, I don't teach right now weekly. Um, I'm more focusing on like workshops. Sure. So this looks almost like a cream color or is that white? Um, this has a little bit of warmth to it. Okay. Um, nice. I'm going to throw a little bit of that in, but then, um, you know, I'll, I'll probably skim some white over. Okay. Because in a in a snowscape, most of most of the time, your snow is going to be the lightest light and not your sky. Usually, in a landscape, your sky is the light source. But when you have different snow conditions, the snow really gets to be pretty light. So, okay. So I'm gonna probably go in with a gray. It's like a kind of like a blue gray, very, uh, very gently, not a lot of pressure at all. Why? Why are you putting that on there? Because um, this tree is in the back. Okay. So as things go in the distance, they're going to get lighter. So it's going to get grayer, purplier, cooler. And I'm going to leave this color neutral that has a little bit more of like a mauvey to it yeah as like a warmer neutral in that's front right. because this tree's in front of that tree okay well that's what i was questioning so that's, know if it was for the sake of the sky or for the sake of the tree yeah it's no it's tree. That's kind of my thought process of- sure absolutely Most of your students are unmuted uh, by their own hand. Does anyone have any questions for their teacher? Yeah. That a lot of them have. A lot of them have seen me do this a million times, probably. Oh, good, good. They, you have very well behaved students, I have to say. <laughs> They're good. They are, yeah. They are. And some of them are friends, you know. Sure, some of them are sure. artist friends. Totally understand that one. So, you know, I want to warm up certain sections in the front. And I'm, I'm not going to really worry about, um, like, I'm not going to get involved in, oh, it's grass. Oh, it's a stick going this way. I just want to give it a, the appearance of there's some type of brambly, you know, grass happening across just to, like, give the um, foreground a little bit more to look so, at. So we're looking for form and shape at this point rather than detail. Yeah. Um, the longer I can go without having to get into details, the better with okay. me. Cool. So also to like, cause I'm painting some trees. Mm-hmm. I'll probably talk about this a little. Sure. Um, you you want to put you know what how you do the sky holes in your trees yeah you want to make sure when you're putting in a sky hole that it's there for a reason like most of the time you're going to see a lot of sky hole when when you have like large branches you know separating or towards the top um, but it's usually for a reason so you can't just like haphazardly put, put you yeah you can't because it won't be believable if you do that yes. Yes, totally. Nice, very nice. 
So these are so these are rather subdued colors. So these are just to set the mood, or are these some of your favorite colors? No, I wouldn't say they're favorite. They're like a lot of these neutral colors. I don't really use that often. Okay. I have like I'm definitely I like I like peach. I like pink. I like the color I'm wearing. Yeah, that's pretty. Um, and I tend to like to use colors that I like to wear. Uh -huh. Make <laughs> if you were to look sense. in my pastel box, yeah. you would see a lot of colors, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, regular, you know, colors that I need for the landscape, but then also colors that I want to see in my painting that I like that make me feel good. Of course. And it all, it's only natural to choose clothing and whatnot in those colors as well. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I've had like a lot of people ask me, I, I taught a little class about it and I tried to like explain why I, I picked the colors because I'm pretty intuitive with color. Uh -huh. I have to say like um, certain things as I've been painting over the years, there's things that I wasn't strong at and like composition used to be, you know, a stickler. And it's like, I realized I needed to learn more about composition. So I got my hands on everything I could read about composition and just learned it. And I studied paintings and now it's like, definitely it's a, I, I feel like I'm, it's a strong suit of mine because I've like focused on it and I've learned about it. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I was talking earlier to an artist and we were talking about that, you know, some people think that they can just learn through repetition, but you have to learn through not only repetition, but learning what you need to know, learn more than what you already knew. And you do that by studying about by getting books by watching tutorials. Yeah, and, and you, you want to uh, make sure that you're not just painting all the time and, and never really stepping back and knowing why right. you're doing what you're doing. Right. Um, because you could go on for years doing the wrong thing. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Some people just repetitively paint, yeah. draw, whatever, and they don't get the actual facility out of it. They don't get the learning out of it. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna probably go in and work a little on some of these trees. And like I said, I don't usually, when I have like a tree in a landscape, I don't usually go in and draw it this dark. I just wanted people to be able to see it. See it. Yeah. Um, but it, it is a vertical plane. So vertical planes are usually your darkest, you know, mm -hmm. darkest area. Um, so I, I like to kind of just, um, I don't like to draw every branch. I like to have um, what's called like lost edges. Sure. And if, if people are, are like new to painting, um, if you don't know like a, like a, what a lost edge is or a hard edge, mm -hmm. like you can see like this right here, see how that's really dark against light. Yeah. See, see how the value jumps, like it's very light and it's very dark. Mm -hmm. That means that's a hard edge. Right. When you have um, edges that blend into one another, like these two pastels, um, well, actually, this is a little bit darker, but usually you can hold them up mm -hmm. and these are pretty much the same value. Like if I was to make a mark with them on my paper a little bit, um, put them next to, next to one another, mm -hmm. um, if they blend together and yeah. there's no, that means that they're the same value. Sure. And that's important when you're starting pastel to, to know. So sometimes it's hard too, because sometimes the pastels are dirty, you gotta wipe them off. But I always, um, I, I recommend students or if I'm teaching a workshop to, to have like a little test paper, the same Absolutely. color. Yep. that you're working on like you would want this type of color not a huge piece but just enough to so you could make little marks and try to you know figure yes. out sure different that values makes, different color schemes makes a lot of sense yeah 
Nice. And a, and a soft edge is one that kind of disappears into the color next to it, yes? Exactly, like um, if I was to go back here with um, this color, mm -hmm. this is the same value as what's down here already. Yep. So it's going to give me a very soft edge. And that's what you want. This is a perfect time to talk about this because you know how you have like the naked trees in, a, mm -hmm. in the background? Yeah. Um, you want them, once they're touching the sky, in front of the sky, you want them to appear very soft. Sure. So you would use a pastel of the same value to get that softness happening. If I was to go in there with a little, anything darker, mm -hmm. it would jump out or anything lighter would jump out. Sure. Like I could show you like, on here. See how I went in with a lighter value and yep. you can see it right away. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you know, right. towards the end, I might go in and, you know, flick some, you know, like the, to make it look kind of frozen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look contrast. There. But that, that I do at the end. Mm -hmm. So I think that I need to go in here and make a little bit more, um, happening. Hmm. And I'm trying to lead, I'm trying to lead, you know, the viewer's eye, hmm. tuck it around through there. And I'm going to make sure that I have, you know, things pulled up over yeah. in front of it, because every time you have, you have a little bit of something pulled over something else in a landscape, you, it's giving you the sense of depth. So it's helping you. Absolutely. Um, and it is too. Very nice. How now I'm just thinking to myself, this looks, you haven't spent like days on it or anything. How about how long does it take you to do a finished piece? I'm sure it varies from piece to piece, but yeah, it, it depends. If I'm working outside, I can say what I need to say in an hour on a nine by 12. Wow. Wow. Because any longer and you lose the light or it you changes. lose the light. Um, you start like, you know, obsessing on the details and mm -hmm. um, it, I like to just go out and, you know, Sometimes it's just for a color study. Like I never really go out and say, I need to have a good painting from this. Like when I paint outside, it's to help me it, like understand. So when I come back in my studio to paint, yeah. that I know what it looks like or how shadows appear on the snow. Mm -hmm. um, like if, if I never went outside and I never painted in the snow, like, uh -huh when you go to put a shadow in, you know, a lot of times you'll see in a beginner's painting, the shadows look like heavy blankets. Right. And, yeah. You know, like, and it's the same way if you've ever worked in oil, I like to build my light effect. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to keep my shadows lean. So build the light. So add multiple layers of light. Sure. And then for shadows, I like to not do as many layers and keep them very like light. Like you want it to appear like a shadow, like it's mm -hmm. translucent and it picks up shadows, pick up, you know, there's warmth in shadows, you know, they, there's reflected light in shadows. Nice. Okay. So I need to come in here and maybe use this for a little, this is like a little, stone wall uh -huh. type of a thing happening. It's got all kinds of stuff growing on it. I love this little scene. It's <laughs> on the way to Hollis, New Hampshire. I used to teach at the Wild Salamander before oh, the pandemic. <laughs> the lovely pandemic. Um, and I would stop here frequently and take photos. It's just, I love, I love fields and I love open 
pass. Ooh, I like, I really like this color. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, that's uh, nice. it's a neutrally gray, but it's got like a, it's got like greenish to it. Mm -hmm. Very cool color. Nice. Nice. So yeah, I, I lost my train of thought when I just said. Well, you were saying that you pass and you like the open fields. And, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just, I love the landscape. Yeah. Like to be outdoors. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a natural piece of artwork, actually. You look at it and, you know, it inspires you. It's an amazing thing. I actually look at the sky and the things around me all the time. And I think to myself, you know. Um, yeah, you definitely need, you learn to see when you're an artist, you learn how to see. Yeah. Um, and even my, even like my husband and my daughter from hanging around with me all these years. <laughs> they learn how to see <laughs> well exactly like yeah. i'll get like my husband will go to work when he used to have a longer commute and he'd he'll send me a picture and he'll be like the sky was beautiful this morning uh -huh, that's great. Like, movement in it and so i find that I, I like you know i like hearing that knowing that you know you know sometimes i'm sure they're like oh here she goes again like you gotta stop <laughs> a million times and take photos and Right. That's why I like to be around my artist friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause because they understand perfectly. They understand. They need those shots. Yeah. So, um, I have a, like a pink, this is a Sennelier half stick. Huh? Um, it's a beautiful color. Nice. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily like add this color into the tree, but, um, it's, the tree is so much in the foreground uh -huh. that I want it to be warm. Yep. This one. Totally. So I'm going to throw some of that in there. Okay. Uh, and then just because I like the color, I'm going to like throw it, you know, in some of the darker areas in this, mm -hmm. you know. I do the same thing. Gee, I really like this color. Where else can I put it? Yeah. Well, that's how you, um, that's how you, you get a very painterly. You get a very painterly picture when you do. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I like that in there. And, you know, usually the, the tree trunk will, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a vertical plane, so it's dark to begin with. And usually the trunks are cooler towards the bottom and warm up because the light source is in the sky. So as the tree goes up, you're going to have a lighter, mm -hmm. you know, it gets warmer and it gets lighter as it go up, it goes sure. up. Beautiful. So your light coming through the trees is, are you, you're using your photograph as a as a guide for where you're putting those lights, correct? Yeah, I, I have like totally abandoned the photographs. <laughs> that's what I was thinking by this. That's point, why I, I would have gone rogue, you know? Yeah, that's why I like to work from my study. study. I just had this because I've done enough demos to know that people always want to know where where's your photo. Yeah. And so I bring the photo because people want to see the photo. Sure. Because if I don't have the photo, they're always like, where's your photo? Where's your photo? What are you working from? <laughs> okay, so you're using your study to uh, to do what you're doing, to see where the light is in the trees and so on and so forth, yeah? Yeah, and I like what I did up here, and then I, yeah. you know, I could say, oh, like, I used a darker Giro pastel in the study. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a little too bright. Uh, I like this one, what I used a little bit better. Nice, yeah, they're very nice. It is kind of hard, uh, just with the the way the light is. I I think if I if I do a lot many more of these zooms, yeah. I I want to get you know a, a different light bulb. I I was gonna say some uh, some people actually use like those gooseneck type lamps and whatnot. Uh, it's hard to get the lighting just right. Yeah, because I was in here beforehand mm -hmm. um, because what. 
it's a south facing room. So I couldn't really do anything till it was nighttime because I knew that that's when I would be on the zoom. Sure. So I tried to come in here and have my husband like fix, try to like adjust the lighting, but I don't know. It actually looks pretty good. You're doing great. well. It's, uh, it's definitely, uh, it was looking real kind of blown out, like really light in certain areas to me. So, um, well, you, you're comparing it, but from where we sit, it looks absolutely marvelous. Great. So I kind of wanted to warm it up a little. I don't, this is a little bit of, um, has a little bit of a yellowish to sure. it. I don't want to. Sure. So how many times have you done this particular picture? Have you just done your study and this piece for this demo? Um, I've done it in a different season. Okay. Um, I've done it in the early spring season where there was barely any snow. And actually that little pastel got me a lot of accolades. <laughs> nice. Yeah, got me into some, you know, big shows, shows. pastel. Got me some points for uh, International Association of Pastel, which is not easy. Mm -hmm. so, so where do you uh, typically exhibit your work and you sell it? Yes, it's for sale? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have some work in um, galleries. Um, I, there's a gallery local, the Boulder Gallery I have work in. Mm -hmm. um, I also have artwork in the um, Fruitlands Museum gift shop and the Cranes Estate gift shop and N.W. Barrett Gallery in um, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Okay, so where are the those other galleries? Are they all in the Portsmouth area? Um, no, um, the Boulder Gal Gallery is right in here in Fitchburg, okay. like five minutes from my house. Okay. Um, I like, I like being in a local gallery. Sure, absolutely. Nice. Um, um, the Cranes Estate is in Ipswich, Mass. Mm -hmm. um, that one I know, yeah. I'm in, uh, I'm a, I was juried into their uh, annual show and sale there. So uh, they asked me to have some work in their gift shop. Sure. Which sure. was nice. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a nice request. Beauty. So it's so much better than having to do every little tree branch thing. But yeah, I'm looking at, uh, like I said, I'm a little bit of a detail nut myself, but I'm looking at what you're doing and you kind of, you know, I like the idea of, uh, I like the free feeling and there's not a, even though there's not a lot of detail or small lines in there, there is detail there. I can see where everything is supposed to be. Yeah, well, um, I like I like to have the have people that are viewing the artwork mm -hmm. leave a little bit to their imagination because your eye your eye knows it's a it's a landscape and so I don't have to yeah, do too it much. finishes it finishes wherever it needs to very yeah. nice so I might you know throw in like a little bit darker things in the front here. Okay, let me tell you, you're at the hour mark, which is just for your sake only. We will let you go all night if you want to. <laughs> um, I, I can go, it doesn't matter to me. I'm oh, totally, totally up to you. I totally appreciate what you're doing. I'll work on it a little more, like I appreciate people you know watching and yeah does absolutely. anyone have any questions if you have questions let me know because most of their mics are turned off yeah but they should be able to hear that we they can, they can hear you and yeah. they've also turned them off themselves so i haven't turned them off yeah no they're they probably have all been on zoom for a while and they know the etiquette <laughs> yeah good good okay I didn't want you to think I was just not letting them speak. <laughs> oh, no.
Cool. So, would you put any kind of a finish on this, a varnish? And again, I know it's a. I'm just not real familiar with the uh, with the medium. Would you put any kind of finish on there after you're done? No. Um, I don't spray them either. Okay, because that uh, would actually change the color. Yes. Oh, it's it will darken them. Uh, most of the time yeah. I've ruined some paintings oh. by spraying them. If, if I absolutely have to spray something, like if I have a really dark, a lot of dark uh -huh. and I'm going to be shipping it like across the United States, I might spray it very lightly in the dark areas. And I would use what's called a uh, Lascaux fixative. It's from France, mm -hmm. but I don't, like I don't like using it it's number one I've ruined things number two it's bad for the environment it's bad for you to breathe sure. um you gotta follow the instructions like you mm -hmm. got you have to follow them to a T like if it says keep it at room temperature between certain degrees I haven't used it in a while I don't know if it says to keep it like 74 or 73 or um, you want to keep it at that right temperature and, um, okay, make so, sure. how, so how fragile is that medium? Are you putting it under glass? Uh, how fragile is it? Will it rub if someone touches it? Oh, no. Well, it's passed up. So you want to avoid lateral movement of it. Right, right. You don't want to ever like have anything that will smush and go that way. Um, like a lot of people like think it's, it's like, oh my God, pastel, they don't want to touch it or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and you just got to really just be a little cautious um, about that lateral movement. What I do when I finish a pastel is I, um, I, whoops, I set it with, um, I press it. So I flip it over and I, I have a big, huge roll of paper that I use as dust covers. Uh -huh. And I, um, I just want to, before I'm going to hold that note for a second, I got my sky dirty. Yeah. So I just want to wipe it off. So to, to correct, yeah. that's all you need to do is like, just barely like touch it and it will take it off. Okay. Yeah. So which brings me to another thought that I want to tell people. Yeah. I have a paper towel in my hand or sometimes I have a, a chamois. Uh -huh. And if you're working in a light area like sky, you have to like wipe your pastel because you see how dirty my hands are. Sure, sure. Um, it's the nature of it. Like it gets, it gets you dirty and it gets the pastel dirty. So you have to, you know, if I was pulling this pink into the dark, I would have to be wiping it every time. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, like my student, like my students know that. Like I sure. yeah, told them, like every time, it's kind of like muscle memory. It's like yeah. use it and wipe, use it and wipe. Like it just totally, on and totally on. understand that. What I what stays in my mind and maybe is a question for other artists. Now, when you said you made a mistake on the sky, you took a, a fan brush and you very lightly cleaned it off of the sky, which yeah. again brings me to the point of like, if you give this gift as a gift to someone or you sell it to someone, you know, how is, you know, how do they know, don't touch it? Well, um, if I was to give it, it would most likely be in a frame. Uh -huh. or um, unless sometimes I sell them unframed. And then if I did that, I would educate them on how to handle it. All right. So you don't, I would tell, I would, ass. Um, yeah, definitely. It has to go behind glass. Okay. Um, okay. Um, the jury is out, um, whether or not, like p some people frame it, right. Attach the glass, you know, put it right against the glass. Uh -huh. Um, some people think that's not a good idea. So it, it's kind of like anything else. You educate yourself on the pros and cons, and then you do what you what you think is right what you think is right okay. and so um 
I tried mounting it directly to the glass and I did it a couple times. I, I did it the first time I had to ship something to uh, I think Washington state, I was concerned. Yeah. Uh, so I mounted it against the glass and, and I made sure to, when I did that, you have to get this special um, tape, acid-free tape, and you have to enclose the entire, um, the entire like pastel yeah. against the glass. You got to go around and like seal really? the entire thing to keep out the humidity. Wow. Okay. So, okay. but I find with with pressing it on a piece of paper, it sets it. And I have literally, I've sent stuff to Canada. I've sent it to shows across the United States. And I, knock on wood, I've, I've never had big issues with glass being um, broken or like all kinds of, you know, dust on the painting or anything. So. So do you ship them yourself or do you? you know, oh, I ship, I ship them myself. Ah, okay. Good for you. I have uh, uh, air float, they're called air float boxes. Yeah. And they're reusable. Huh. Um, so, you know, they're a little ex on the expensive side, depending on the size. Like um, I had to ship a large painting one time to a show, like a IAP show or um, like out in Albuquerque or a, the plein air convention I shipped some work to before and I just like to have my own box because it, the airflow box comes like you can order it to your specific size that you need. Mm -hmm. And it's all like has all kinds of foam, which yeah, uh, it yeah, secures it because whenever you're shipping anything, not just artwork, you don't want to have any play in the box. Like you want your painting to be snug. Yeah. Like you don't want any shake, any movement, because the more movement, the more apt it is for damage. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I usually sh will ship from like the most office. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the, um, a lot of times when I've had discussions on the best way to ship it, uh -huh. they'll tell me U.S. Postal Service a lot of times only because it's like FedEx and UPS handle a lot of very large, large boxes of things. So when your painting is coming down the conveyor belt, it could be getting smashed into by another massive box. And they said the US Postal Service typically doesn't handle that, you know, they handle some large things, but it's not like FedEx and UPS. Sure. So Good I've had good luck with U.S. Postal Service good um, shipping my stuff. Uh huh. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. So you always put them under glass. You just don't seal them. There Correct. I use a spacer, okay. so it goes. It goes the glass. Yeah. Um, the spacer. Oh. Okay. The painting. So your painting is not sitting on the glass. glass. Ah, okay. So um, I don't know, like, I, I really don't, like, I'm having fun painting, so. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you want to watch, I can keep talking and painting. And I'm sure if people don't want to watch, they can just leave. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, I've been on enough Zoom things that, you know. Right. Yeah, that, yeah, true, true. <laughs> you do tend to drop out. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. See, I'll wait. Nice. Yeah, very nice. Beautiful, beautiful. So if people want to get in touch with you, how can they do that? My dear? Okay. Um, if, if you're on Instagram, my handle is my last name or uh, it's Rogopolis. Yeah. Um, or 
definitely my website um, is I, is Lisa dot com. Uh -huh. um, yeah. In so definitely in Instagram um, is my social media of choice. Um, oh, okay. Probably be on Facebook less and less. It, well, yeah, I yeah. stay on it because I, you know, I have a following on Facebook and I yeah. do, um, I do sell a lot from Facebook. So yeah. I do, I do so get on there. Platform. Yeah. yeah, but Instagram, I find um, more uh, artist friendly, I think um, less, well, I should say less political, less I don't know, at least now, right? You know, yeah. now I haven't seen as much as when I get on Facebook. Mm -hmm. so. Totally, totally. I like to be able to, you know, get on and enjoy some paintings. And it's like a little, it's visual. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is absolutely marvelous, marvelous. So um, I'm going to actually read some of your bio because I didn't get a chance to do it at the beginning. So while people are watching you do that, I would like to read that. Would that be okay with you? Sure. You can feel free to Very it. cool. Very cool. And what uh, for the rest of you, what Lisa writes here is when realism meets impressionism in pastel, that's where the excitement begins for her. Okay. That's how she likes to paint. First impressions of a scene are moments she wants to capture. And that's why plein air painting excites you. And, and what we're seeing and the way that you did this, you started blocking in uh, these areas and immediately capturing the mood of the, uh, of the picture. I think that's amazing. Commitment to teaching began a decade ago. Small private classes in your home. Uh, evolved to weekly classes at your studio in the Wild Salamander Creative Arts Center. Okay, so are you still at the Wild Salamander Creative Arts Center? I have some work there. I haven't taught there just because of the pandemic. The pandemic, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Was and I was doing weekly classes there, and I was um, I was starting to get away from the weekly classes and just to do more workshops. Cool. Okay. And these um, workshops because what they focus in on a certain subject or for a certain technique. Yeah, and it just like it, it's better use of my time. I found. All right. So um, I have I have this. Um, I purchased some uh, Rocher, Henri Rocher pastels, uh -huh. and. I like using them. They're to use at the end, definitely. They're and they're very. They're like I don't know if you get. Can you hear it? Yeah, I can hear it. It's and that's very. I was going to ask you why at the why at the end is it the best time? Uh, they're just. I just find like they're gritty and they're good to um for like a stumble over things. The yeah, stumble. stumble. Yes, I think. Yeah, like and if <laughs> anyone's new and they don't know what stumble means, it's kind of like you do it in oil it's mm -hmm. like, like a dry like you dry brush like something over like another color or another value yeah. um and it it just gives you a, a little effect yeah. so i wanted to just get enough on here to show you how i um do this little bit of frozen i don't know if you can see the little uh, Mark you can you actually can and I was wondering if that was gonna go on there. Uh, yeah, that's like a that's definitely a de another detail thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I leave it till the end. Sure. And I'm very economical with my mark making. Yeah. Um, at the end, I don't mm -hmm. I don't want a lot of mark making. I don't want it to be too contrived uh, yeah and i mean some people really get carried away with all of that and it's easy it's easy to do yeah, I, absolutely especially like if you're doing um a wave, a wave scene maybe mm -hmm. and you're like flicking you know pieces onto like for the spray the little yep. pieces i mean you get carried away with that and like, <laughs> yeah. it could become a fiasco yeah um but I usually just take, I take a lighter pastel, like definitely like a, it's not a pure white. Um, this is a little warm white. 
uh, I'll probably use the warmer white because it's up close. Sure. And um, just, I'm going to lightly kind of scumble over like the tips mm -hmm. of it to show. Catching the white. Nice. And to do it on the branches. Mm-hmm. Usually I just, I find like the direction, like it's, it's very vague. You probably can't see it. It's very, you can um, see it very muted, but it's, it's definitely there. So I usually just put my pastel down uh -huh. and I, I sometimes just, I, I do like a, this little motion of kind of roll. It's not like rolling it, but kind of is rolling it. And, <laughs> Because you want all different, you want all different marks. Mm -hmm. You don't want all the same direction. You don't want all the same thickness. You want like tiny pieces here and there. Nice, nice. Just to give it that effect. And you want to like make sure that you overlap it and you don't, you don't have to have it all connected either. Mm -hmm. Like you can have broken edges and that will be believable to what it is. Nice. Okay, so before we find a good stopping place, tell me what a master circle status is all about. I'm seeing it with the International Association of Pastel Society. How did you get that, my dear? How did I, how did I do that? Master circle status. What did you have to do to have that? To get okay, that? you have to... You have to enter um, I, an IAPS um, governed Pastel Society, like there's Pastel Society of New Hampshire, Pastel Society of Central Mass, Maine, um, and I'm a member of a bunch of those. So first of all, you have to be a member of one of those accredited societies, mm -hmm. and then you have to enter um, the IAPS shows, and they only have two shows a year and they are highly competitive. Mm -hmm. Like the best of the best. Like when you get in a show like that, like you feel like when you go to that show, it's incredible. The work is just outstanding. Nice. So it, it it's really amazing. And, and it's, and I know like when you're trying to get in and you get rejected and, and there's been a lot of rejection, like it's not easy to get on those shows. Yeah. So, and it's not uh, easy to say get rejected. That. People have a hard time with that. What did you? Well, I, yeah, you have, have a hard well, time with rejection. I think if, if you're an artist, you need to have thick skin. You you really do, absolutely. Um, so you need. They only have two shows a year. One show is um, an online show. Well. I shouldn't say that because with the pandemic, they were all online, but all online these usually days. in a non-pandemic year, um, there would be twice a year, usually at a specific venue. Um, they usually um, have it in this place in Albuquerque. It has a huge convention hall. Mm -hmm. um, and that one you ship, if you get in, you ship your work. Okay. Or you drive and you <laughs> deliver it or whatever. Deliver it, yeah. Um, so you have to get in, I want to say you have to get five points. Um, so every time you get in the show, that's a point. Ah, okay. And if you win an award at their show, that's another point. And let me tell you, that is not an easy thing to do because it's just gonna say, that not a whole like lot of rewards. Yeah. Um, and even if you get like one, one year I had entered and I got two paintings Ooh. into the IAP show and, did they and it only gave you one point. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it like, yeah, it's hot, not easy. It is not easy, but uh, let me tell you, sometimes, you know, it's easy to get annoyed when you try and you try and you try, and you don't get something. But yep. on the other hand, it, it's, once you do get in, like the feeling that you know that it is not easy. 
yeah. and that your work was deserving enough to get in. Mm -hmm. So it makes it extra special, I think. Uh, yeah, the harder it is, the more you appreciate getting in there. Absolutely. Yeah. So I was supposed to go and get my medallion mm -hmm. this June because it's uh, they have it like biennial. Um, but with the pandemic, they canceled it. It's going to be next uh, 2022. Nice. nice. Which is uh, which is a smart idea, I think. Sure, sure. Because <laughs> I don't think that I'd be wanting to be in a, any crowd. Well, in June. yeah, that's the thing. You know, we're very social and we want to be with people. On the other hand, you don't want anyone to get sick either. So, you know. Exactly. Mm. But anyways, that's how you have to do it to get in. Sure. You have to be accepted. Mm -hmm. And and the more you win, the better it is. It's five points. Five points. Well, yeah, it's, help, it's helpful if you yeah. were to win because yeah. then you get an extra point. <laughs> <laughs> and you become an extra circle status person. I love it. I love it. Okay. So it is, it is definitely, it, it is an honor. Like, I'm... I'm hoping like definitely that I can attend sure to get it because it's a nice ceremony they have it on a you know a stage at the convention and like the the president of IAPS gives it out which is Richard McKinley mm -hmm. who's a, a really wonderful artist nice, nice. beautiful work okay so, just, uh, well when you, when you're ready uh, let's find a good stopping place and I just kind of asked anyone if they had any questions before we close and if we can get kind of a close up. Did I see a hand? Does anyone have any questions? No, no. Okay. So, and if we can get a kind of a close up, that would be very cool. Is that too close? Yep. Back up just a little, a little bit more. Okay. Right there. And give the oh, see the camera is really starting to focus in on it now. That is absolutely gorgeous, and I love the feeling of it. That's oh, thank the, you. That's and, the the best part to me is just the way it feels. That's awesome. And and that's what I want to evoke that emotion in my work. Absolutely, absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. So uh, you know, I'm gonna pick around yep. in it, and you know. And send you know, it to me. Like the sky holes and yeah. you know little things like that and like I'll take a look and like these are too dark I need to like you know subdue some some things and pull out some more and lose some edges but you are uh, such a typical artist you will be looking at that and go picking at it and doing this and that for a while uh if you I'm, were, I'm pretty good about that though like yeah I do not like overdo it. I'll set a timer. Oh, good for you. Good for yeah. you. I'll definitely when set you, a timer because you can overwork stuff very You quickly. can definitely overwork a piece. When you are finished with that, send me a photo and we'll put it up on the website. Okay. That'll and um, cool. I'll definitely, you know, once I pick around with it some more and I, I think it's pretty done, I'll, I'll post it on social media yep. and for and my friends it. and yep. students. And send it to me and we'll put it up on the website. Okay, so I just want to thank you again, Lisa Regopoulos. Okay, <laughs> www.lisaregopoulos.com and uh, at Regopoulos on Instagram or at Lisa Regopoulos Fine Art Pastel on Facebook. So yes, it's, and, it's perfect. And also, if you'd like to, um, I have a newsletter that I send out. Um, I try to do it every month, sometimes not. Um, but if you go to my website and you want to get my newsletter, um, you can just add your name right on my website. You put in your email address um, and it, it, it tells you like different events like demos, mm -hmm. demo, um, workshops, tips on pastel, um, art, new artwork, just things like that. And it, it, it will never inundate you because I hate to get in, inundated with emails mm -hmm. from stores. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, it's very true. So people can become members, all right? Um, mm -hmm. And they can follow you on Facebook 
and I do have, uh, well, we're actually going to record this and throw it up on YouTube. So we'll actually send you some links as well. So you can actually put that on your website also. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for having me and thank all my friends and students um, for participating. Students. Thank you, students. You are awesome. And you're awesome. an awesome teacher, obviously. Very oh. nice. Oh, they're applauding you. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I agree. All right, my darling. Uh, we okay. will see you shortly. I'm going to send you an email and I will convert this and get this to you as well. Thank okay, you. thank Everyone. you. Yes, you're Bye. very welcome. Good night. <laughs>